this is Dawn Hollis on the Academic Commute and I am speaking today, this isn't a full podcast um, because I realised after having done my first podcast yesterday that I had in fact forgotten to do one of the segments that I promised to do, um, which is a bit annoying for my first uh, full podcast. Um, and so I thought I would just do a quick sort of 15 minutes um, wrapping up the bit at the end. So the bit I promised to do was that in, at the end of each podcast I would talk briefly about the things that I do, or that I could, other academics do outside of academia, um, outside of research and teaching to relax. Um, so what's the sort of extracurricular activities as it were. Um, and so I'm currently driving home uh, after it's about ten past nine, um, after finishing running the dissertation boot camp at St Andrews, um, which was an incredibly um, enjoyable experience. Um, is just so satisfying this that to, to, to sort of every time I sort of think oh maybe the method that, 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 that we've sort of constructed won't work um, uh, you know it was just a fluke last time and then yet again you have a cohort of students the vast majority of whom do seem to find it beneficial and who go away saying you know this has been fantastic I've made so much progress in my dissertation um, I never thought I would do this much in this amount of time and it's such a satisfying um, experience to be able to be a part of that um, so I'm feeling pretty pleased. I'm also feeling pretty um, tired and indeed one of the reasons why I uh, decided I would do this sort of catch up is because I thought it might be good to have something to keep me focused and awake and alert as I am driving home. Um, it's kind of, I'm currently crossing the Tay Bridge um, and it is uh, raining. Dundee is looking rather grey. So yeah, so I decided that for this first sort of outside of academia slot I would talk about Magic the Gathering um, and if you listen to my first podcast sort of introducing the idea that I had for the academic commute um, the idea for doing this sort of recording in my car and talking about things um, in a fairly informal way was in fact inspired by a podcast by Mark Rosewater who's uh, I think the chief designer on Magic the Gathering or certainly a, a very important designer um, and he does a podcast about the game um, which he records in his car it's called Drive to Work um, and it's really good I've very much enjoyed listening to it as I've been commuting and so I thought you know I'd do my own I'd do the academic commute um, and I'd sort of be inspired by his choice of setting um, so what is Magic the Gathering um, it's a little hard to explain um, so it is a collectible trading card game um, it's a deck building game it's a game which you, you play with decks which you have built and these decks have lots of different cards in them um, and it was it was basically the original um, collectors collecting collecting trading card game um, it, it, it's what things like Pokemon which I guess is sort of the, the most the more famous and prominent version for, for my generation at least um, it's what games like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh were um, modeled on in terms of how they sort of constructed the game and how the cards um, you know, trying to, to, to create a game whereby the cards are things of um, value that people collect and open booster packs for, um, but they then can construct uh, their own decks with which to play. And so you, you collect the cards not only for the, the purpose of sort of collecting, but also to um, play the game. So they were, um, it was basically the, the, the original designer, Richard Garfield, was inspired by uh, baseball trading cards and thought, you know, how can we mesh that with a sort of fan fantasy themed game. <clears throat> so uh, Magic the Gathering, I don't, it always struck me when I, before I started playing it, as uh, before I started, you know, it just being a sign I took granted as a really odd name, it's Magic colon the Gathering. Um, I just to be honest, it's better than a lot of PhD thesis titles. <laughs> uh, but um, it struck me as sort of oddly phrased. Um, uh, but you know, I've got over that, and, and most of the time you either just call it magic or MTG uh, for short. Um, so magic is a fantasy themed game, there are lots of elves uh, and wolves and wizards, and basically the, the sort of the idea behind the game is that you are a wizard, <laughs> you're a wizard Harry, um, uh, you're a wizard and you are um, fighting it out with other wizards, you're casting spells and you are having these sort of battles um, and these are occurring on um, different planes so each block or each set in um, magic
magic and they release a new one every couple of months um, is, is on is on a different plane or is exploring more of another plane um, and these planes are like different worlds with all sorts of different characteristics um, and some of them are inspired by different things so the current set is inspired by ancient Egypt which is absolutely amazing because um, I love was an absolute fanatic, fanatical ancient Egypt geek when I was a, a, a kid um, so this is absolutely delightful um, it's an actually an incredibly competitive game um, there's a, a pro tour which is a sort of professional uh, competition um, there are huge um, events called Grand Prix uh, where you can go and you can play the game and um, there's also a very sort of thriving kind of uh, local community um, events going on so most card stores or gaming stores in the world certainly in the well in Britain and the US and uh, I'm sure it's popular in many other countries um, will have um, Friday Night Magic, uh, which is a weekly event where you go and you play magic and you, you, you win a prize, which is normally a card, which is, you know, that, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> um, and sometimes you can win booster packs and things like that. Um, but it's not really, a, 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 why, why I really like magic is not because of the sort of the winning part. So taking, no, no, I like winning, um, <laughs> but not for the sake of sort of going to competitions and winning prizes, but just because it sort of is a sign that you've built a good deck. Um, and so how, how to explain how the game works. So basically, um, there are different formats in which you can play. Um, the format that's sort of most norm, most customary um, is to build a 60 card deck. Um, and this deck, you can't have more than four of the same card. Um, and cards will have different effects. So some cards will um, create creatures who will sort of land on the table in front of you and they will be able to attack for you or protect you from being attacked. Um, and you can also cast spells which have some impact that can I know, damage your opponent or prevent them from casting their own creatures or um, just have loads of different effects. And the aim is essentially to build a deck where you've got the best combination of cards, that cards that work together really well um, to create a deck that um, in, in the sort of parlance goes off um, which will sort of you know that the combination of cards will come out and it will make it basically very very hard to beat um, and it, it sounds kind of silly you know um, playing a fantasy themed card game um, but I'm gonna you know try and make a case for it as a, as a particularly good game for academics to play um, because you spend so much of your, your time certainly as an arts and humanity humanities academic making connections between different things you read between sort of and trying to consider what what um, different sources you have and that speak to each other or that um, contradict each other and what you're drawing patterns and you're making these sort of broad arguments and I think that in a way having this huge collection of cards and then going right well what works together um so there's this concept in magic the gathering called synergy which is you know when when a set of cards work really well together and i actually find that an incredibly uh useful term to think about in terms of history you know um because often i'm working with texts that are texts that have strong similarities but you can't necessarily prove that one text is indebted to the other and I think that saying you know they, they've got synergy they have this this thing that matches um, that speaks to each other um, and I think that's actually a term which is quite helpful academically speaking um, so I've you know it, I, I think there is a case to say that it, it can um, be a way of sort of gamifying and having fun with the types of skills that you build up as an academic and can also sort of provide interesting new ways of thinking about um, analysis of texts um, but that's kind of um, me sort of the lady protesting a little bit too much um, because really it's just a very fun activity um, so most games are two player games um, so my husband and I when we moved up to St Andrews and we moved to a little village called Crail um, we um, a, a year after we moved to Crail um, a, another couple moved to Crail who we got became very good friends with and they loved playing um, uh, tabletop board games um, and this is also something that, that, that we had very much enjoyed when we were in shared houses and had people around to play with um, and so we spent sort of a, a year and a half just sort of like most Friday nights going over and playing games and having a few beers and it was just a really awesome um, way to relax um, and then when we 
with you to move away. We were like, oh no, we won't have anyone to play games with anymore. We won't have anyone with a massive collection of board games uh, to, to, to borrow. Um, so we wanted to find a game that we could uh, that was a really good two-player game for us to play in the evenings. With. <laughs> God, we sound sad. Anyway, um, for us to play in the evenings and. Uh, my husband used to play Magic the Gathering when he was a child um, and he said why don't we try this um, and so uh, we tried it so you can buy what are called pre pre-built decks um, where the designers of Magic have put together a deck um, which you can play out of the box you don't have to sort of figure it out for yourself um, and so that was how we started and we very quickly sort of grew out of that um, although I must admit when I first played uh, Magic the Gathering um, I was absolutely nonplussed. I played it against someone who was... <coughs> I'd been playing for a long time and I was like, wait, wait, what's happening? Why does tapping that elf mean you suddenly get a wolf? And what does it mean, create a 4-2 beast token? And, and what do you mean, counterspell? I don't understand what is going on. Um, uh, but very rapidly, uh, you sort of learn uh, the basics. And then once you've got the basics, you can begin to learn the more complex stuff. But, um, and then and it's a, <laughs> a very deep game in the sense that um, it is relatively easy to pick up but once you've picked up picked it up there is a lot more learning to do about how to get really good at it and how to actually understand how the game works on a sort of structural level um, I'm making it sound really boring and it really isn't um, uh, and then when we moved to Sterling um, having sort of taken up magic to play against each other, uh, we then discovered that there was a local card shop um, called Common Ground Games in Stirling, uh, which hosted magic events. And so we went along and um, met all these wonderful people who we sort of now play with regularly. Um, and it's ironically, a lot of them are actually students. Um, uh, so <laughs> uh, students at the university, um, uh, postgraduate students. So I think it does attract the sort of um, people living the life of the mind <laughs> in, in, in a certain way um, and uh, yeah so I think that's about that's about it that's that's one of the things that we do for fun um, if, if if any if the listeners ever come to our house um, this hopefully expl will explain the sort of strange pile of boxes with odd pictures on them that are on top of the piano <coughs> and we'll explain the really um, odd sort of teardrop shaped thing that is hanging a cardboard sort of construct that is hanging from the the, 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 the top of our conservatory which is in fact a, um, a model which we won uh, in playing a sort of casual competition it was one of the cardboard sort of promotional models that the uh, owner of the card store was getting rid of and, and we said oh can we play can, you know can we make from the prizes <laughs> Uh, and so that, you know, that's one of the things that makes our house look a bit eccentric, among other things that make it look eccentric. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just hardly recommend it to anyone, it, except doing so is quite dangerous. So magic is um, jokingly known as cardboard crack in that you know, it's made of cardboard um, and it's really um, addictive. Um, and also costs, you know, people can spend a lot of money on it, although we try to avoid doing that. Um, but yeah it's just um a lot of fun and it's the it's not sort of like um most games which have a sort of limited amount of replay value where you'll get bored eventually of playing them um there are endless possibilities new cards are always coming out so you always have to think oh my goodness will the decks i've built how do i change them in response to this new so <coughs> these new cards how can i improve things are there going to be uh new challenges for me to face when people come up um, so yeah, I think it is a lot like academia, but a more relaxing version. You know, it's sort of like new literature coming out and, and you suddenly having to adapt the, the arguments and the, uh, and, and the ways you're thinking um, in response to, to, to new material. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's true. So yes, Magic the Gathering as a gamified, fun, um, wizards and goblins version of academia. Um, so yeah, that is me signing out.